Hi, my name is Django. Welcome to part two in my series on electronic music production in Reaper. In part one, we looked at some of the actions and preferences I use for sequencing on the grid. If you haven't seen that, the link will be in the description. Today, we're gonna to look at my project template and how I set up a MIDI track template for virtual instruments. So as you can see, I have two effects sends. I've got a short reverb and a ping pong delay. If I need anything else, like a long reverb, I can just load from my track templates. The ping pong delay I actually created using re-delay. I've got one re-delay with two taps, each only feeding back once. The one's panned left and the other's panned right. The first tap is set to one eighth note and the second one is set to two. So you hear the first one, then the second one, once. And then the next re-delay repeats those two taps as many times as I need. Sometimes I replace the second delay with one of those Tell dub plugins. So then you get quite a cool ping pong dub delay effect. So anyway, if I want to send something to one of these effects, I just grab the IO routing button of my source track, my sound, and drag it onto the send. Next up, you'll notice I have a reference track. What this is for is, if I'm mixing any track, if it's mine or someone else's, doesn't matter, I like to pull in some sort of reference, something similar, and basically make sure I'm on the right track. But references have usually been mastered, so I don't want to run it into my mastering chain. So what I've done is I've gone into the I.O. and routed it directly to my speakers, and I've turned off master slash parent send. So it goes straight to my speakers and bypasses any effects I might have on my master chain. It's pretty quick and easy to set this up, but it's even quicker if it's already in my template. I can also duplicate it if I want more reference tracks. Next, given that I'm making electronic music quite frequently, if we switch to the mixer, you'll see there's another track that's been hidden just from the TCP. This is basically a ghost rhythmic sidechain source so that I can have a sort of pulsing effect separate from my kick drum. It's quite a simple chain. All it is is an instance of resynth being triggered by a step sequencer JS plugin. I'm using a modified version of JS Mega Baby. I'll put a link in the description, but actually the regular Mega Baby is fine for this job. Next, I've got a sidechain compressor already pre-configured for whatever track I'm going to put it on. What I'll do is I'll drag the compressor onto whatever I'm going to sidechain compress, enable it, and drag the I.O. routing button from the ghost track to whatever track I want to sidechain. Resynth is on one and two of the source channel, which is the ghost sidechain channel, and the destination is the auxiliary input on the compressor, which will be on three and four on the receiving track. An important detail here is to select pre-fader. This means that you can have the fader down so we don't hear recent little sine wave tone. The reason I have the fader down is because if you mute a channel in Reaper, it gets completely deactivated. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple project template. And the reason for that is in Reaper, we can have track templates. And this saves me needing to have a whole ton of stuff already preloaded, which would actually add to the load time of the template. For regular audio tracks, I don't actually need a track template. If I double click in the blank space or load a sample into a new track from the browser, if I just drag it in, you'll notice I have an EQ set up and it's got a couple of extra bands. So I've already got a high pass and low pass. And then I've got a low shelf and a high shelf. And then two sweepable bands. So all I did to set that up was once I'd configured it, I right clicked on the EQ and set save as default effects chain for all new tracks. And I also went to the little plus icon next to the presets, click the save preset as default. And then in the drop down, I select the patch called default and overwrite it. So now the default patch, whenever I load the EQ from my effects list, will have this configuration. So that's audio tracks. Let's try and set up a track for virtual instruments. 
First, let's try and record some MIDI on a normal track that we've double clicked to create. And you'll notice there are quite a few extra steps before we can actually start recording. So I'm going to add a virtual instrument and press a key on my MIDI keyboard and we have no sound. First thing to do is record enable and if I enlarge the track you'll see this drop down here to tell it what exactly will be my input source. I like to set it to all MIDI inputs. I also like to tell it to record MIDI overdub so when it loops I'm adding to the loop rather than replacing it. Now we need to click input monitor so that we can hear the virtual instrument. I also like to right click the arm button and click auto arm. So now whenever I click away from this track it unarms and when I click on it, it record arms. I find this really handy for producing music on my own. If I'm working with someone else and we want to lock MIDI controllers to separate tracks, I can just switch it off. Now, for some of you, that might be all you need. You could save this as a template and whenever you click on it, you're ready to play MIDI notes in. But I decided to go a step further. First, I added an instance of Recontrol MIDI. And what this allows me to do is set the CCs for pitch and mod wheel. Note that it needs to be before your virtual instrument. And from here, I can move the knob and I can go up to the last modified parameter up here and click show track envelope. And now I can automate my pitch and mod wheel without going into the piano roll. What I've also done is clicked show in track controls. So now if I pull my track a little larger, you'll see I've got the pitch and mod wheel as knobs, which I find handy as a shortcut if I'm already in the synth, then I can just grab these knobs, particularly if my controller isn't plugged in for some reason. So now we can automate the pitch and mod wheel with the mouse, but if I link my hardware pitch bend and mod wheel to recontrol MIDI, when I hit record, it will record both here and into the piano roll. So it will record that data twice and cause a bit of a conflict. Luckily, I found a way around this. If we right click the record button, we can go down to input effects chain. And in here, I've added a MIDI notch filter. I will post a link to this in the video description as well. It's called Piz MIDI Notch Filter. This is a free MIDI VST plugin, so it's not exclusive to Reaper, that allows you to notch or block four MIDI messages. So you tell it what message, I've selected MIDI CCs, which MIDI channel, I've selected any, then for mod wheel it just says CC1, and then I repeated the process except for pitch bend. So now it's happening because this is on my input effects chain, pitch bend and mod wheel data aren't going to be recorded to the piano roll anymore. The reason I can still use my pitch bend and mod wheel on recontrol MIDI is because I've enabled my controller for control data, which is a preference you'll see here. I'm not sure if every controller can do this, but when I tried to link my mod wheel or pitch bend to recontrol MIDI, it said I needed to enable this. So now we can hit MIDI learn, move my controller, and also make sure you have this option ticked to only have it when this track is in focus. That way you can reuse your mod wheel on every track. So that's mission accomplished. We can now record automation and draw in automation on the track control panel over here, instead of having to battle with MIDI CCs in the piano roll. I really do hope they improve on that or let us convert between the two one day. Another thing you might have noticed I blocked in PIS MIDI notch filter is channel pressure, which is also known as mono aftertouch. The reason for this is that basically for any keys I held down on my MIDI controller, if I started to press harder or softer, it would start modulating something in certain synths, often the cutoff, and I found it quite drastic. It wasn't usually what I wanted, so I have notched it out completely, but if I ever did need it, I could just come and disable this part of the plugin. So now that we've got a track that as soon as we click on it, we can record MIDI, 
let's save this as a track template and now there is another trick if you have sws and snm extensions installed you can take advantage of one of their tools which will let you load a track template from an action basically so first we save our template go into extensions resources and if your template is not already showing here you can add a slot double click on it to locate your track template and then you can shuffle these around and the slot number matters basically so slot number one is my virtual instrument track template so now I go into the action list and I search for import and here we have import track from track template slot 01 so now I've assigned a keyboard shortcut to this and I can quickly load my track template by the way you can have more than four track template slots you just need to edit a .ini file. Uh, I will post a link to a forum post on doing that in the description. So to summarize, I've got a pretty minimal track template, but it's got things I use pretty much every time. And if I create a new audio track or drag something in from the browser, I will immediately have an EQ. And I've also got a virtual instrument track that I can add with a keyboard shortcut so that I can immediately start playing and be creative. Hope you guys found that useful. I know it's a bit of a process to set up Reaper initially, but in the long term, I found it extremely helpful to have done so. If you have any questions or suggestions for another part, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and a special big thank you to John from the Reaper blog for letting me provide some content. Have a great day. Cheers.